thousand stories of what they think you're like. And I've heard the tender whisper of love in the dead of night. And you tell me that you're pleased and that I'm never alone. this morning with hearts full of gratitude and thanksgiving that you are that loving good father who keeps the door of reconciliation and renewal open for us and that um, we don't have to have it all figured out and we don't have to have tidied up all of our messes before we come back to you all we need to do is to just turn to you in our hearts and um and ask you to come home. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. It was never God's purpose to abandon Jesus in that tomb, you see. His purpose was always 
to exalt Jesus, to exalt that name above every other name, so that the name of Jesus Christ, every knee will bow and every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord. Jesus Christ is the King of Kings. Amen and glory to God. Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Father God, we are so grateful to be able to come and to gather here once again in your name. And this day, especially, we are thankful that we gather not just as people, not just as your people, but as Easter people, confident and sure in the knowledge that Jesus is risen, that you did not leave him alone in that tomb 
that despite our Friday and our Saturday when everything seems lost and we can't imagine how everything could ever be made right ever again, Sunday is coming. Easter is coming. You have the victory. The tomb is empty. You alone have the glory. Father, we just lift up our praise and our thanks to you this morning. All glory to your name. Amen. Amen. This next song, uh, The Father's House, reminds me of the story of the prodigal son and how we have this amazing, loving father who is always ready to rejoice when we, when we return back to him. Sometimes on this journey, I get lost in my mistakes. What looks to me like weakness is a canvas for strength. My story isn't over, my story's just begun. Failed to want to find me, cause that's what my father does. Failure want to find me, cause that's what my father does. Shame at the door Well, hey, everybody, welcome to the venue. It's good to be together with you this morning. Uh, if 
we haven't had a chance to meet yet. My name's Owen. I'm one of the pastors here at Fuquay Verena United Methodist Church. And uh, we're glad to have you in worship this morning. Uh, this is the venue. It's our online-only worship service. We've created it to try and craft community online. And we're so glad that you are uh, here to be a part of that with us. We got um, Ron is online, and we got Reggie here in the room. So we've got lots of fun, lots of fun folks in charge this morning, uh, and we're glad that you're here to be with us. A um, couple of things before we dive in. The first, if this is your first time or your first time in a long time, uh, we'd love a chance to not just connect with you, but to help you get connected with other folks. So uh, you can just text the number that's there at the bottom of your screen. We'd love a chance uh, to reach out. We'll even send you one of these delightful venue mugs. Good morning, friends. Uh, so let us know. Love to follow up with, with you in that way or to help with anything. If you hear something this morning, you want to follow up on it, you know, like I said, don't hesitate. Just shoot us a text and we'd love to get back, uh, back in touch with you. Um, we have, today is the first Sunday in a season that we call Lent. Lent is the 40-day season that leads up to Easter. Uh, it started actually technically with Ash Wednesday, which was last week. If you were not able uh, to be with us in worship, I'd encourage you to go uh, find it on YouTube uh, and hang out with us some there. But um, we are handing out today sort of Lenten devotional books that will help you, help us kind of carry one another through the season. Um, you can pick one up, obviously, at the church. Uh, you can swing by and get a hard copy. But uh, we've got a digital copy for you at fbumc.org slash Lent24. Uh, and you can see it there. Uh, and I was flipping through it uh, earlier in the week, just sort of wrapping my brain around it. And I'm really, uh, I'm hopeful that it'll be a good resource uh, for you guys as we uh, journey through the season together. We got lots of fun stuff, good stuff, meaningful stuff coming up. And then uh, also today is uh, a new members and baptism Sunday. So uh, all across our worship services this morning, we've got uh, all sorts of folks uh, joining, becoming a part of our church. Um, if that's uh, something you'd like to have a conversation about, um, you know, you'll have to sign in blood to come to the new members class. But uh, if you want to come learn a little bit more about the church and see if, you know, becoming a part of our covenant community is something you'd like, um, we've got uh, some classes coming up, um, both sort of, there is a class coming up on the 25th, which is next week, uh, but also uh, all the classes are there, so you can check that out. And we'd love a chance, before we dive into worship in a little bit, uh, we'd love a chance to introduce you to those who will be joining our church family today. And so here they are to introduce themselves. Hi, I'm Cliff, this is Scotty. And I'm Sarah, and this is PJ. We started attending in 2020 virtually, and then in 2021 we started attending in person, and that's when Scotty was baptized here, and we became members. And this morning PJ is going to be baptized. Hi, my name is Lee Kisselberg. I've been coming to FBUMC for a little over a year now, and I play guitar in contemporary worship and help lead the youth. Um, I'm excited to join today. Hey, my name is Jessica Trimbley, and um, we have been a member of the church for about 12 years now. Hi, my name is Brooke, and I'm getting baptized today. Good morning. My name is Linda Ramji. I've been attending Fugue Marina United Methodist Church for a little over a year since I first moved to this area, and I'm excited to make this my church home. Shall lose me, I will sing. Oh, I 
Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is the one true church, apostolic and universal, whose holy faith let us now declare. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Well, today is the first Sunday in Lent, and if you aren't familiar with Lent, it is the 40-day season in the church calendar leading up to Easter. And traditionally, Lent is a season of fasting and preparation, and it's during this season that we prepare ourselves to be able to properly celebrate Easter. We began this journey a few days ago on Ash Wednesday, and today is kind of the first Sunday in Lent. So we started the sermon series that we are in now on Ash Wednesday, and this is our, indeed our first Sunday. So if you weren't with us at Ash Wednesday, the series is called With My Whole Self. And in the midst of this series, we'll be talking about what it looks like to love God with the whole of who we are. Uh, before we jump in, though, I want to share a bit about how we got here. I think the this series in particular, that it will be really helpful to know a little bit of backstory of what led up to this series. So several times a year, we gather as a staff worship team to work on mapping out our sermon series that we have coming up for the next series of months. And when we do this kind of work, we try to both look back at where we have been and also to prayerfully look forward to ask, what does our congregation need to hear uh, right now or in a season that is to come? And we also ask things like, what is God doing in our midst that we need to listen to a little bit more closely? Or what do we need to pay attention to that God might be inviting us into over the next couple months? So about eight months ago in May of last year, we gathered to do some of this work of mapping out sermon series. And we ended up putting a bunch of the series from the last two years up on the wall. So we ask ourselves, where can we remember of where we have been and what series have kind of stood out to us most? And when we put all of those series names up on the wall, we noticed that we actually had been on a pretty consistent journey. We've been naming and highlighting similar themes. So over the last two years, if we kind of were to frame up where it is we feel like we have been, we feel like we've had a call to repentance, an invitation to return to God with our whole selves, all that we are, all that we have, both the good, the bad, and the ugly, kind of all of our lives. And we recognize that there are also really hurdles and barriers to this work. We've talked about kind of fragmented lives and life in boxes. You might remember that series, how we've had hard hearts and that can keep us from the work of giving ourselves to God with our full self. We've talked about how shame and guilt, as well as cultural form notions of God, that we might need to unpack a little bit to be able to come to God with the fullness of who we are. So we've been working to name through this kind of series of series, how we can love God, worship God, be consumed by God, and know God all with our whole selves. We've used kind of different language all throughout, but again, we didn't really realize that we had intentionally been on this journey, but it became pretty clear as we put all of these different series up on the wall and saw them all together. So you might be wondering, all right, Hope, that's cool, but what does that have to do with this particular series? Why does this all matter? Well, 
about a year ago, a little less than a year ago, in March of last year, so even before we kind of mapped out the series of series, was when we first created the sermon series document that I'm actually preaching from today. So this was our first round of brainstorming of what it would look like to do a sermon series where we are talking about having an embodied faith, a faith that embodies everything that we do, the fullness of who we are. And that was, again, when the sermon series doc was first created, and it's gone through several different iterations. But as Shelby, Owen, and I have been crafting this series in particular, the more we got into mapping it out, the more we realized that we were highlighting many themes that we have been preaching about for the last two years. And it led to a little bit of frustration, even like for a hot second, we were just like, oh gosh, do we need to scrap this entire sermon series that we've been so excited about and tried to actually preach several times and ended up moving it around? Do we just need to scrap it all because we've already said these words? We don't want to sound like a broken record. And we found ourselves kind of fighting that tension and trying to figure out what to do next. But in the space of that conversation, we sensed God actually inviting us to ask a different sort of question to ask who in our community is already living into these questions of what living a life of faith that embodies the love of Jesus in all that we do might look like. So we've actually decided to turn over the microphone for most of Lent to hear from y'all about what this journey has been like for you and your own personal life of faith over the last few years, to hear what types of things you've been processing. And today I will set up the series and at the end, Owen will close it out. But in between, you'll have the treat of getting to hear from several people in our congregation that have graciously agreed to preach. And even more than that, we have several more people that have agreed to share their own stories of processing, you know, what it looks like for them in this season to love God with the whole of their selves. So you really are in for a treat. It is going to be an incredible season as we kind of process collectively. Anyway, I realize that is a really long introduction to a sermon but I do feel like some of the setup of how we got here is going to be helpful to inform the rest of where we are headed in this season and why we are spending most of the season asking questions of you. So you'll notice in your booklet for Lent, it's just a series of different questions in space for you to reflect as we are inviting lay members of our congregation to kind of publicly reflect a little bit more as well. So as we talk about what it looks like to love God with our full selves, the framing of scripture that we will be using throughout the series is called the Shema. And the Shema is a prayer from the Old Testament that Jewish people have prayed for thousands of years, every morning and every evening. And even if you have not heard the word Shema before, if that's new language for you, I'm going to venture to guess that you probably already are familiar with some of the words of the Shema. It says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. You might know that Jesus called these words the greatest commandment. And Jesus goes on to also name the second greatest commandment in Matthew chapter 22, verse 39. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. And the Shema embodies the heart of God's desire for us to love God with the fullness of who we are. And then by extension of that love to love our neighbors as ourselves. Matthew even goes on to say that on these two commandments rests all of the law and all of the prophets, meaning that taken together, the Hebrew scriptures of the Old Testament can be boiled down into these two commandments, to love God and to love neighbor. Everything that we ever think or believe or say or do about God must be motivated by these core impulse to love God and to love neighbor. So knowing the importance of this scripture, it is not surprising to me that Deuteronomy then highlights the importance of remembering this commandment. It invites us to do whatever we can to not forget this commandment, to love God with the whole of who we are. It goes on to say, These commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Remember that? We're going to come back to it in a second. And then also wrap them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. Now, these instructions might sound a little bit extreme, but they certainly, I think, speak to the importance of remembering to love God with the whole of who we are. Now, dating all the way back to the third century AD, Jews have been, because of this commandment, they've been fixing these scriptures on the doorposts of their home inside of what's called a mezuzah. And you'll be able to see a, a photo of this up on the screen 
and it is a case that is fixed on a doorpost and actually inside of that case, it has a strip of parchment that has this commandment uh, fixed inside of it. So that anytime you walk through the entrance of your home or whether you leave your house, you can go through this scripture and can be reminded to love the Lord your God with the whole of who you are. Um, the scripture also talked about tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads and Again, Jews for quite some time have bound the scripture on their head and foreheads through um, tefillin, which is a small leather box uh, filled with scripture containing leather straps that you can both wrap around your head and then also, and, and forehead, and then also wrap around your arms. And we have some more photos of that as well so that you can see exactly what this might look like. So by praying the Shema daily, we learn to offer all that we have and all that we are to God. And God promises in return to offer each of us a transformed life. So over the next few weeks, we're going to be exploring what it looks like to love God with the whole of who we are. I love how the scripture breaks down kind of the whole of who we are into several parts. Our heart, which you'll learn in that week that it also means our mind. So sometimes it's translated as both heart and mind. Sometimes it's just one together. Um, our heart, our soul, and our strength. And while these Three distinct parts are all distinct. Each of them, I think, helps us think a little bit more fully about what it means to offer God our hearts, our mind, our soul, and our strength, to offer, again, the whole of who we are, even with all of those individual parts. So our lay preachers will be diving a little bit more fully into those three distinct parts, but I want to end today by thinking about actually the very first word of the Shema. It says, here. Now, I can tell you, it has been many years that I have kind of recited this scripture and I could tell it to you front and back. And at the same time, I can also tell you that for most of my life, I have thought that the first word in the Shema is H-E-R-E. -E. But actually the first word in the Shema is H-E-A-R, to hear, um, as in to listen. Now, when we think of hear as not just like a place, but to hear or to listen, I think it changes so much of how this verse is set up. The Hebrew word for hear is Shema, which is why we actually call this prayer the Shema. Now, this word means to hear as in to listen, but it also means to pay attention to or to focus on. So it's an invitation to pay attention, to focus at the very beginning before we even get into the rest of the scripture. Shema can also mean to respond to what you hear. It can be a call for help. We often hear in the Psalms a cry to Shema my voice or to hear my voice when I call, O Lord, to be merciful and to answer me. So therefore, it's a call for God to help, not just to hear us, but to do something about what God is hearing us say to God. It's also fascinating to me that in the Hebrew scriptures, there aren't separate words for listen and obey. But this call to listen is actually also a call to obey. So in the Shema, when we say hear, O Israel, at the very beginning, it's an invitation not just to hear the rest of the words of the Shema, but it, the Lord, our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. But it is also an invitation to obey, to put these words into actions such that the whole of our lives embodies this love of our God. So throughout, so throughout the season of Lent, we will be praying these words together. They are listed in your reflection guide that you should be able to download online or come by the church and get. And I certainly would encourage you to find a way to put these words before you, whether you take the time to write them out or you put this handout in a place that you'll be able to see it regularly. I'd encourage you both to use it as a reflection guide as well as an invitation to pay attention to how you are offering your whole self to God during this season of Lent. So as we wrap up this morning, I'd like to offer the question that I have been asking myself to you so that you also can be reflecting alongside us this week. And the question, which is also listed in your handout, is what have you been hearing from God lately? What has God been inviting or challenging you to pay attention to or to focus on? During the season of Lent, we take time to listen to our God more closely, to pay attention in a different sort of way to what God is inviting or challenging us to pay attention to or focus on. So it feels like kind of a fitting question for us to end with today. I know for me, I've sensed a call from God in this season to pay attention to paying attention more. I can 
too easily find myself numbing out as I scroll on my phone or zone out at the end of the day, just trying to turn my brain off for a second rather than paying attention to what God is doing around me, taking time to listen and reflect, pay attention to those around me and what God might be saying through each of them. I've also found God inviting me to trust God with both the little things and the big things in my life, recognizing that too often I have a desire to control what is not mine to control. So part of my own personal work this Lent is to offer God the whole of who I am, to offer my worries, my plans, my joys, all to our God who is abundantly faithful. So as we consider in the season of Lent what it looks like to offer our whole selves to God, I am going to turn it over to Ryan Ede, who's going to share a little bit more about his own spiritual journey that he's been on over the last couple of years and kind of what he has been processing as he considers what it has looked like for him to be able to offer his whole self to God. Good morning, Fafumsi. My name is Ryan Ede, and today I want to share with you a little about my journey of spiritual growth over the last few years and how it has impacted my life. Our family started attending Fafumsi in 2019, and we began getting plugged in through Bible studies and small groups. I started to look for ways to serve and get connected with the praise team where I could leverage some of my spiritual gifts as a musician. The more involved we started to become, the more we felt like Favumsi was our new church home, and we decided to join as members in March of 2020, right before the pandemic shutdown. The Sunday that we were supposed to take our membership vows was actually the first Sunday that the church canceled in-person worship due to the pandemic. This was a time of uncertainty and anxiety for everyone. As the world shifted to virtual spaces for school and work, I felt more disconnected than ever. Thankfully, I received the opportunity to join the new stream team, leveraging some of my technology skills to help support our church's streaming services. I also applied my recent experience on the tech team to new ministries by serving with our youth tech team, helping them to learn the ropes of the sound booth and planting the early seeds of serving at church. These roles resonated with my belief that I was meant to serve in the background, supporting our church without stepping into any sort of visible leadership role. I've always felt hesitant about leadership at church, doubting myself and fearing the responsibility of guiding others without formal theological training. The thought of misinterpreting scripture or saying the wrong thing is scary to me. Through several of the sermon series, I started to work on my spiritual self and figure out where God was working in my life. During the All Things New series, we were called to leave behind our fear. The power to serve is built on our confidence in God. I knew that calling made sense, but it didn't make it any less difficult. I would need constant encouragement to grow. Another series that spoke to me was Life in Boxes. Owen and Hope used physical boxes to show how we tend to compartmentalize various portions of our life, keeping them separate. Our work, family, personal, and church lives were often purposely disconnected. I realized that I actively kept many aspects of my life separate, but worse yet, I was trying to hide some portions of my life from God. I didn't feel like I needed to bring God into my work environment, which contributed to the feeling that things were fractured. I knew that these teachings were calling me to become a better version of myself. I needed to find a way to see God working throughout all the different compartments of my life. Unfortunately, with the constant busyness of work and family commitments, I found it difficult to see God's work in my life at all. I was too busy focusing on all the things that I needed to get done each week. This led me to start to carve out times of quiet during commutes, camping trips, and hiking trips. In these moments of solitude, prayer became a conduit through which I could see God's work in the world around me. I've been blessed with many spiritual gifts, yet struggled how to apply them best to serve God. Our family has always prioritized financial giving, viewing it as returning to God what is already His. I realize that this principle also applies to spiritual gifts bestowed upon us. They are given to us to serve God in his kingdom. The idea propelled me to get involved more deeply with our church, stepping out of my comfort zone to serve in capacities that once seemed difficult, such as co-leading a Bible study for our scouting youth. It became clear to me that serving God isn't just about volunteering time. It's about dedicating our whole selves, our talents, and our hearts to him. This led me to look for ways that I could push beyond my comfort level and serve in other capacities that I didn't feel confident in. I was called to serve on our staff parish relations committee. This was a big step for me personally because it put me in a role that definitely started to feel very visible, and that was the type of role I would normally navigate away from. Fortunately, I was able to use some of my work experiences to work on a subcommittee of SPRC and focus on some of the benefits around the staff. 
it made me feel like I could leverage some of the gifts that God gave me to help improve a part of our church. I know I need to continue to motivate, my, vo- motivate myself to take the challenge and grow. One of my driving motivations has been to set an example for my sons. It's so important for them to see their dad living out a commitment of giving, serving, and loving God with all that I am. It's easy to tell your kids what you care about and what you want them to focus their attention on, but it's much more powerful to stand up and lead by example. This journey has led me to reflect deeply on what it means to be a disciple of Christ, integrating the teachings and sermons into my daily life. In sharing my story, I hope to encourage others to recognize and use their gifts and service to God. It's about moving from a place of doubt and hesitation to one of active faith and service. It's about seeing every aspect of our lives as an opportunity to serve and glorify God. Thank you for allowing me to share a little about my journey with you. I'm still working towards becoming a better disciple of Jesus, and each day is one step towards that goal. Let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Well, I'm really uh, grateful for uh, both, I think, the prompt that Hope has put before us this morning, as well as uh, for Ryan's uh, Ryan's testimony there, sharing. Uh, it's been, uh, you know, it's been fun to kind of watch over the uh, over the, the over the years now. Can we say over the years for Ryan? Uh, uh, but I guess we've been hanging out for about five years. It's been fun to watch um, to watch him grow and change. And uh, I'm just I'm glad that you got a chance to hear that as well. And uh, he's a person of, uh, I think, deep faith and an even deeper humility, which is always an impressive thing to me. So thank you, Ryan, for sharing and being willing uh, to do that. And I, I, uh, I am hopeful that throughout these next few weeks, um, we can all be reflecting on what our journey... Sometimes, you know, we like, uh, did you have a good day? Yes, I had a good day. No, I didn't have a good day. Or you get to Friday and you're like, wow, how was that week? And it's like, well, I don't... Remember, it went by so quick. Like sometimes we just want to focus on how life is going and these little tiny parts and pieces, uh, you know. Uh, but maybe this next, uh, these next few weeks can be for us a chance to kind of pull back and take a, a longer view of our life over the last few years to see maybe what God has been doing uh, over the course of that time. So hopefully all of us will have a chance to do that. And I think um, uh, I, like, I like Hope's question. Um, what, what, are, what is God inviting you to do? To, to hear, right, to focus up on, to see, to pay attention to. Um, and thankful for, uh, thankful for her reminder that sometimes we're, we're just called to pay attention to paying attention. Uh, and so maybe that's a good place for all of us to start. But uh, as we um, uh, sing or sit in the midst of uh, this last worship uh, song, uh, I would invite you just to kind of take a prayerful moment um, and maybe just uh, pay attention to the thing God's inviting you to pay attention to. Uh, where is God calling your your mind, your memory? Uh, where is God um, maybe inviting you in the midst of prayer to kind of uh, to see or to settle in uh, over the last few years of your own life and your own experience? Let's worship together in this way.
come to life when you breathe dead hearts beat inside when you breathe heaven comes to earth it changes everything when you breathe walls start breaking down when you breathe brand new songs pour out when you We can continue to, uh, to, to sit with, process, wrestle with this question uh, over the next few weeks. And I'd love to invite you uh, back next week uh, for some more of that work. Hopefully, uh, hopefully you'll be able to join us for that. Um, all throughout the season, again, uh, you can check out Lent24, I think is the, the link there. Uh, and the, Oh, sorry. I, I went out of order. This is not Reggie's fault. Sorry, Reggie. Uh, if this is your first time with us or your first time in a long time, uh, you can text the number that's there at the bottom of your screen, and uh, we'd love a chance to follow it with you, um, get help you. Here's the, here's the segue. Here's the segue. Uh, also, we'd love to help you if you're interested in joining us uh, for anything during this Lenten season as we invite folks to consider what it looks like to worship with our whole selves. There you go. You can download the, uh, the Lent guide there. Um, it'll help us kind of week over week, pay attention to what we're, what we're doing, help us continue to ask the question, um, that we set up today. Uh, and then again, uh, it was great to, uh, again, all morning long, have new folks join us. If that's something you're interested in, uh, don't hesitate to reach out and let us know. We'd love a chance to, to follow up with you in any capacity that we can. All right. Well, it's been great uh, to be with you in worship this morning and, um, we just offer God's blessing uh, over you as you head out into the places that you live, work, and play, um, knowing knowing that when we offer our full selves to God, um, God can do some pretty amazing transformative work uh, in each of us, and we certainly pray that that could be true for you. Uh, it's been great to be in worship with you. Uh, blessings on you as you go, and we'll see you right here next week. See ya.
that lay between us How high the mountain I could not climb In desperation I turned to heaven And spoke your name into the night And through the darkness Your loving kindness Tore through the shadows of my soul The work is finished The end is written Jesus Christ, my living hope. Who could imagine so great a mercy? What heart could fathom such boundless grace? The God of ages stepped down from glory. I 
turned to heaven and spoke your name into the night. And through the darkness, your loving kindness tore through the shadows of my soul. The work is finished. The end is written, Jesus Christ, my living hope. Who could imagine so great a mercy? What heart could fathom such boundless grace? down from glory to wear my sin and bear my shame. The cross has spoken, I am forgiven. The King of kings calls me his own. Beautiful Savior, I'm yours forever. Jesus Christ, my living Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the one who set me free. Hallelujah. Death has lost its grip on me. You have broken every chain. There's salvation in your name. Jesus Christ, my living
just like a child, so innocent. And I'm safe inside your arms, cause you won't let go. I've never known a love like yours. Jesus, your name is power, it's breath and living water, and your spirit.
before him. Tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves when my heart becomes green and my shame is undone. Your presence, Lord. Holy Spirit. what our hearts long for, to be overcome by your presence, Lord, your presence, It was never God's purpose to abandon Jesus in that tomb, you see. His purpose was always to exalt Jesus, to exalt that name above every other name, so that the name of Jesus Christ, every knee will bow and 
every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord. Jesus Christ is the King of Kings. Amen and glory to God. Well, good morning, everyone. I'm Brandon. It is wonderful to be here together with all of you. I'm going to invite you to stand if you're able. Maybe take a, take a little breath, kind of settle your thoughts, and um, let's use these songs as an opportunity to move our awareness closer to God this morning. Weapon that silences the enemy. Let praise be a weapon that conquers all anxiety. Let it rise. Let praise arise. Sing your name in the dark and it changes everything. We sing with all we are and we claim your victory. Let it rise, let praise arise. We'll see you break down every wall. We'll watch the giants fall. Fear cannot survive when we praise you. The God of breakers on our side. Forever lift him high. With all creation cry, God. what freedom feels like this is what heaven sounds like we praise you we praise you this is what living looks like this is what freedom feels like this is what heaven sounds like we praise you we praise you this is what living looks like this is what freedom feels like this is what heaven sounds like we praise you we praise you what freedom feels like this is what heaven sounds like we praise you we praise we'll see you break down every wall we'll watch the giants fall there cannot survive when we praise you the god of breakthroughs on our side forever lift him high with all creation cry god we praise Good morning, everybody. It's great to be together with all of you. Um, I, my name is Owen. If we haven't had a chance to meet yet, it's good to be together with you in worship this morning. Uh, it does look like all of the back rows are filled, which is actually often the first row to fill up. Uh, but in this case, I think what I mean by that is if there are seats in between you, we may need to just squunch just a little bit. I see there's still some folks coming in the back there. Don't worry. We will find you friends. 
all is well. Uh, if this is your first time with us, or your first time in a long time, we're particularly glad you're here. Oh, that's excellent squunching. I see real squunching taking place. Thank you. That's good. No one ever actually does that when I say it. Uh, so good job over here. I see you. I see you. Um, we have some folks that are bundled up outside by the welcome tent. So if this is your first time with us, your first time in a long time, uh, we'd love a chance to connect with you there before you head out. We got uh, goodie bags with some homemade cookies just for you, as well as some info about the church. Um, and so if you'd like to stop there, you can. Uh, not just to connect with you, but to go ahead and start the work of getting you connected with each other. Uh, we'd love a chance uh, love a chance to do that. Uh, if there are any ways that we can partner with you, um, if you hear something this morning, you want to reach out, uh, there's a Connect Serve call in the front of the chair just in front of you. Uh, you can fill that out at any point in time and drop it in the offering boxes on your way out uh, and we'll make sure to follow up with you uh, this week. Uh, today is the first Sunday in the season we call Lent, which is the 40-day season leading up to Easter. Um, and we have been and continue to pray that this will be a meaningful journey uh, for all of you. We're going to be talking about what it looks like to love God with our whole selves, with all that we have and with all that we are. Uh, and so as we enter into worship this morning, let's enter in, uh, with that in mind, um, figuring out what parts and pieces us, of us we've been holding back and doing the beautiful work of offering that to God in worship this morning. Well, I, um, I love singing contemporary Christian music, um, but I really do believe that it costs us something if we totally cut ourselves off from kind of the heritage that we have of uh, the rich set of hymns um, with the United Methodist hymnal and, and tradition. So I always love opportunities to take old hymns and uh, sing them in new ways. Let's sing together, Come Thou Fount. Come now, fount of every blessing, tune my heart to sing thy grace. Streams of mercy never ceasing, call for songs of loudest praise. Teach me some melodious sonnet sung by flaming tongues above. Praise the mountain fixed upon it, mount of thy redeeming love. Wow, you guys know this one. Here I raise my ebony. to arrive at home. Jesus taught me when a stranger wandering from the fold of God he to rescue me from danger interposed his precious blood. How your kind Your kindness. 
song is entitled More Like Jesus, and it's just one of those songs that has really been speaking to me over the past few weeks since we've been learning it. Music has a powerful way of touching our heart and soul, but it's really the message behind the melody that can truly transform us. So with that in mind, I just invite you to open your hearts and to truly hear the message that God is speaking to us through this song. Sing with us. You came to the world you created, trading your crown for a cross. You willingly die, your innocent life paid the cost. Counting your status as nothing, the king of all kings came to serve. Washing my feet, covering me with your love. If more of you means less of me, take everything. Yes, all of you is all I need. Take Jesus, this world is dying 
for your unconditional love and grace each and every day. Lord, as the words we just sang reminded us, change us like only you can. This world is dying to know who you are. We want to love you with our whole heart and soul, God. We long for you. Thank you for giving us a love that's worth talking about. Help us to make the choice to use that love to be your hands and feet in our lives and to be able to walk it out in our lives, Lord. Help us to recognize all the opportunities to be your hands and feet in our community as you continue to work in our hearts. Thank you for loving us and blessing us with the chance to share this love with others. Lord, all of you is all we need. Amen. You may be seated. I feel like sometimes uh, I sing songs that I mean, and mm. sometimes I sing songs that I want to mean. Mm. Those, Bad. I need more warning for the next time, because those were very dangerous words. Yeah, they really were. They really were. Anyway. Good nonetheless, yes. yes. Well, friends, this morning we have the gift of getting to welcome people into the life of our church family through both baptism and membership. And we have a video that is going to introduce you to all of the people that are joining all morning long. And while that is playing, I'm going to invite our baptism and new member folks for today to come on up. Our friends that are here worshiping, y'all might need to let them walk right through you since we have, yep, perfect. Make way for Thank ducklings. you. Yep, slide and make a tiny little path. That's great. Thank you all so much. Well, let's go ahead and meet our baptism. Hi, I'm Cliff. This is Scotty. And I'm Sarah. And this is PJ. We started attending in 2020 virtually. And then in 2021, we started attending in person. And that's when Scotty was baptized here. And we became members. And this morning, PJ is going to be baptized. Hi, my name is Lee Kisselberg. I've been coming to FBUMC for a little over a year now and I play guitar in contemporary worship and help lead the youth. Um, I'm excited to join today. Hey, my name is Jessica Trimbley and um, we have been a member of the church for about 12 years now. Hi, my name is Brooke and I'm getting baptized today. Good morning, my name is Linda Ramji. I've been attending Fuqua Verena United Methodist Church for a little over a year since I first moved to this area, and I'm excited to make this my church home. all of y'all uh, who are joining or being baptized today. And anytime we have folks who are coming to either join or be baptized, we ask the same questions on behalf of the whole church. So I'll ask them of all of you today. Do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? Do you? I should have warned you that similar to the song, these are, these are bold <laughs> and dangerous words, yes. It is fair to say them with meekness. Spiritual forces of <laughs> I wickedness. <think> so. <laughs> Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? Do you? And do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in his grace, and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church, which Christ is open to people of all ages, nations, and races? Do you? Well, uh, it is through the sacrament of baptism, and you'll remember that a sacrament is just an outward and visible sign of an inward and spiritual grace. So it's something that we can see, feel, touch, and experience, but we believe it represents something that God is doing on, in, on the inside of us. And it's through the sacrament of baptism that we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the Spirit. All of this is God's gift offered to us without price. Uh, and so, um, I have questions for two of you. First, to Sarah and Cliff, will you nurture uh, your child in Christ's holy church that by your teaching and by your example, he may be guided to accept God's grace for himself, profess his faith openly, and to lead a Christian life? Will you? 
and to Brooke. Uh, according to the grace given you, will you remain a faithful member of Christ's holy church and serve as Christ's representative in the world? Will you? Awesome. And now to you, the church, uh, we ask a question in response. Do you as Christ's body, the church, reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? If so, say, we do. We do. There you go. All right. Now we have the chance to get to pray over these baptismal waters, and any time we do, as we are praying, we name all of the ways in which God regularly has used water to save us and deliver us across time, trusting that the same God will meet us in these waters. So let us pray. Eternal Father, when nothing existed but chaos, you swept over the dark waters and brought forth light. In the days of Noah, you saved those on the ark through water. After the flood, you set in the clouds a rainbow. When you saw your people as slaves in Egypt, you led them to freedom through the sea. Their children you brought through the Jordan to the land which you had promised. Then in the fullness of time you sent Jesus, nurtured in the water of a womb. He was baptized by John, anointed by your spirit. He called his disciples to share in the baptism of his death and resurrection, to go and make disciples of all nations. So God, we ask that you would pour out your Holy Spirit to bless this gift of water in those who receive it to wash away their sins, to clothe them in righteousness throughout their lives, that dying and being raised with Christ, they may share in your final victory. Amen. Amen. All right. PJ, are you ready? <laughs> all right. That's all right. <laughs> you just talked right into the microphone. <laughs> Peter, John, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. May the Holy Spirit work within you, that being born by water and the Spirit, you might be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Oh, yeah. We're ready for the baptismal waters. He said, give me the whole picture. Who's it going back to? <laughs> All right, Brooke, you want to come this way? We were hanging out not long ago. We were talking about baptism with your brother, and you were sitting in the room, and you said, why are we talking with him? Can we also talk with me? How long ago was that? Do we remember? It was like maybe a year ago? Maybe a year ago. Yeah. Well, this is a big deal. I'm glad you're here. Brooke, your middle name is Elizabeth. Is that right? Brooke, what do you desire to be baptized? Brooke, Elizabeth, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Brooke, the Holy Spirit work within you that being born by water and the Spirit, you may be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, we have uh, so much uh, to be thankful for um, and to give, to give thanks for today with you guys. Um, and then uh, to those of you who will be joining, uh, hey, Lee, I still see you down there <laughs> hanging out. According to the grace given you, will you serve as Christ's representative in the world as members of Christ's universal church? Will you be loyal to Christ through the United Methodist Church as you faithfully participate in the ministries of this congregation by your prayers, presence, gift, service, and witness? If so, say, I will. There you go. Well, brothers and sisters in Christ, I commend to your love and to your care these who are before you today. I do all in your power to increase their faith, confirm their hope, and perfect them in love. I invite you uh, to welcome them into the life of our church with these words. We rejoice and bid you welcome to Fuquay Verena United Methodist Church. With you, we renew our vows to uphold it by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness. Amen. Well, it's a big day. Congratulations. Let's give a round of applause. Yes. Yep. Like a shirt. I just saw no, a shirt. I totally missed. In case I forgot his name, it was right on the shirt. <laughs> Back to the guitar now. Yeah. <laughs> well, as we uh, kind of shift our focus now and turn our attention uh, to the reading and understanding of God's word this morning, Enjoy Sunday school, you guys. Thanks for coming in. Yeah, corral, are you corralling? Is that what that is? Herding? A um, couple of things uh, before we, as we uh, dive in. Um, as I said a second ago, this is the first Sunday uh, in uh, the season called Lent, and uh, we'll spend a lot more time unpacking that in just a little bit. Uh, but I wanted to make sure that on your way in, you picked up one of our uh, Lenten guides uh, to help us through with the journey. Uh, we're going to be talking about what it looks like for us to worship with our whole selves. Um, if you lose it, or if you're online with us at the moment, uh, you can find a copy of this at uh, feumc.org slash Lent 24. 
for, but it kind of works week by week uh, through our sermon series, and so it'll give you a chance to be processing uh, all throughout the week uh, the stuff that we're talking about in here um, in worship. Uh, also on the back, uh, there is a QR code to a Facebook uh, page uh, where you can be invited to share your own stories, um, and we've got some folks that are going to be sharing theirs uh, there as well. Uh, and then also, um, we just saw some folks join to be baptized. If that's something that you're interested in, uh, next Sunday we have a next new members class coming up, but you can see uh, all of those uh, classes right on our website, feumc.org slash new members. Um, and if you've got questions, uh, you know, you don't have to make a decision before you come, uh, but you can come and hang out with us and ask all the questions, find out more about the church and how to get uh, connected. We'd love to journey with you in that way. Are you ready? A 40-day season, not including Sundays, leading up to Easter. And this new sermon series is called With My Whole Self. And throughout the series, we're going to be talking about what it looks like to love God with our whole self. Uh, before we jump in, though, I do want to share a little bit of how we got here, because I think particularly in this series, having a little bit of backstory to how we arrived at this series, I think will be a little bit helpful. So several times a year, we gather as a staff worship team to kind of work on mapping out sermon series for the next several months, sometimes even up to a year from that point. And whenever we are doing this work, we are doing kind of two things. We are trying to look back at where we have been and also look forward to prayerfully consider where God is inviting us to go, to ask questions like, what does our congregation need to hear right now? Or what is God doing in our midst that we need to listen to or to press in a little bit more deeply? So about eight months ago in May of last year, when we gathered to do this work of mapping out sermon series, we ended up putting sticky notes all up on the wall of all of the sermon series that we could remember from the last two years. So we could have just gone to a document and found all of them. We do have all of them, but we try to ask ourselves, like, what are the ones that have really stood out to us over the last couple years? And what are the themes and things that have kind of stood out to us? And when we put all of the series that we could remember up on the wall, we did notice that there was a pretty consistent theme that we'd been coming back to again and again, whether we kind of realized it overtly or not. Over the last two years, we've had an invitation to return to God with our whole selves, all that we are, all that we have, the good, the bad, the ugly, truly all of who we are. We've recognized that there are also hurdle, hurdles and barriers to that work. Fragmented lives, if you remember our sermon series, Life in Boxes, if you were with us a couple years ago for that, we talked about how we often like to put our life into lots of different boxes, and church can sometimes become just another one of those boxes. Um, we have named that Shame and guilt or hard hearts or even culturally formed notions of God are also barriers that help us from being able to worship God and even know God with our full selves. So through the series of series that we have been through over the last couple years, we have been inviting one another to love God, to worship God, to be consumed by God, and to know God all with our whole selves. We've used different language all throughout, but we didn't necessarily realize how specifically we had been on this journey until we kind of mapped it out and saw everything together. And when I was preparing today for this first sermon, I looked back into the sermon series doc that had all of our info for this season, and I looked to see when that was created. And it was created in nearly a year ago in, on March 20th of last year, even before we began this mapping out work. And we had been hoping for some time to do a sermon series about an embodied faith. And as we went to online worship, we also had been thinking a lot in those groups about, gosh, like, what does it look like for our faith to be embodied, whether we are worshiping in person or whether we are worshiping online for all that we do and all that we are to be embodied by our faith. So needless to say, this series has had several iterations. We've tried to preach it several different times, and as we finally got to the point of recognizing, okay, we're going to aim for Lent of 2024, when Shelby, Owen, and I were kind of putting together the series, we found ourselves like, gosh, I feel like we're just going to be saying the same things that we have been saying over the last two years. Are we just going to sound like a broken record, and people are going to zone out and not actually care about the series because we've already done this? And the more that we were kind of processing that, um, we felt like 
for a hot second, hmm, are we just going to scrap this series and move quite along, even though we have been hoping for so long to do this? But then we found ourselves asking a new question. We sense God inviting us to ask who in our community is already living into these questions of faith, of what living an embodied life of faith and love of Jesus with our whole selves might look like. So we have decided for this season of Lent uh, to hear from y'all, to turn over the microphone, to hear what the journey has been like over the last couple years for you in your own kind of faith journey, in your own processing, what you have been learning. So today I'm going to set up the series, and Owen's going to close it out in the end, but in between you will have the treat of getting to hear from several lay preachers in our congregation, folks who just like you are worship with us week in and week out, and have graciously agreed to share a little bit more of their their story. We also have some storytellers throughout Lent that are folks who have recorded videos to share a little bit more of their own story of what they have been processing as well as they think about what it looks like to live into their faith with their whole selves. So you really are in for a treat over the next several weeks. And I realize this is a really long introduction to a new sermon series, much longer than we typically do, but I really think some setup of kind of how we got here will hopefully be helpful to inform the rest of the series and kind of where we are headed. So as we talk about what it looks like to love God with our whole selves, the framing scripture we're going to be using is called the Shema, which I realize might be an unfamiliar word to you, but I am confident that as we hear the words of the Shema, that you will recognize some, if not all of them, as words that are familiar to you, even if you don't necessarily know that language. The Shema is a prayer from the Old Testament that Jewish people have prayed for thousands of years every morning and every evening, and these are are familiar words, words that are at the core of our faith. So we'll read first from Deuteronomy chapter 6, starting in verse 4, if you'd like to follow along. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. You may know that these words Jesus also called the greatest commandment, along with the second greatest commandment, to love your neighbor as yourself. The Shema embodies the heart of God's desire for us, to love God with the fullness of who we are, and then by extension, to love our neighbors as ourselves. Matthew even goes on to say that these two commandments hang all of the law and prophets, meaning that taken together, the whole of the Hebrew scriptures, the Old Testament, can all be boiled down into these two commandments, to love God and to love neighbor. Everything that we do, say, or believe about God or that we do in our daily life should all be motivated by these two core things, to love God and to love neighbor. To knowing the importance of these scriptures, it's not surprising then that Deuteronomy highlights the importance of remembering this commandment, invites us to do whatever we can to not forget this commandment, to love God with all that we are, and even gives some specific instructions. It says, these commandments that I give to you today are to be on your hearts Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home, when you walk along the road, when you lie down, and when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. Now, these instructions might feel a little bit extreme, but they certainly kind of speak to the importance of remembering to love God with our whole selves. Dating all the way back to the 3rd century AD, Jews have been living into these scriptures by fixing these scriptures on the doorposts of their home, inside what's called a mezuzot. You can kind of see that on the photo here. Inside the mezuzot are some parchment papers with the scriptures um, written on them. So anytime you enter into your home or anytime you leave your home, you can place your hand on the doorpost and the mezuzot to remember to love God with the whole of who you are. These scriptures have also been kind of used to be bound by what's called teflon, uh, which is a small leather box that you put the scriptures in, and then you also can bind them with the leather on your arms and on your forehead to fully kind of live into these scriptures. So this is a scripture that um, Jews and Christians alike across time have taken seriously, that have lived into kind of what it looks like to love God with the whole of who we are. And the hope is that by praying the Shema daily, we learn to offer all that we have and all that we are to our God. And God promises in return to offer us a transformed life. 
So over the next few weeks, we're gonna be exploring what it looks like to love God with our full selves. And I love how this scripture kind of breaks the whole of who we are into several parts. Uh, Our heart, next week you'll hear a little bit more about that, kind of our heart also can mean our mind, uh, our soul, and our strength. Um, These three parts, though all distinct, each of them help us to think a little bit more fully about what it looks like to offer not just a part of who we are, but the whole of who we are to our God. And our late preachers are going to take some time diving into these kind of three distinct parts a little bit more fully over the next three weeks. But I think this morning it might be helpful for us to start by looking at the very first word of the Shema. If you remember, the first word is hear. Hear, O Israel. And I can tell you that maybe like you, this is a scripture that I have known for quite some time. It's one that I've prayed many times throughout my life. And so it should not be a scripture that I feel like I'm learning new things about uh, even today. And yet, this word here, whenever I think about the Shema, I think of this word as H-E-R-E. But really, this word is H-E-A-R, to hear as in to listen which actually changes so much of the meaning of the Shema as well as how the verse is set up. Um, The Hebrew word for hear is actually Shema, which makes sense as to how the prayer gets its name. And this word does mean to listen, but it also can mean to pay attention to or to focus on. Shema can also mean to respond to what you are hearing. It can be a call for help. We often hear in the Psalms a cry to Shema my voice, or to hear my voice when I call, O Lord, and be merciful to answer me. Therefore, it is a call for God to help, not just to hear us, but to do something about what our God is hearing. It's also fascinating to me that the, in Hebrew, there are not separate words for listen and obey, but these two words actually are one word with a dual meaning. So in the Shema, when we say, hear, O Israel, it's an invitation not just to hear the words that follow of the Shema, to love the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. But it also is an invitation to obey these words, to put these words into action such that the whole of our lives embodies this wholeness of what it is to love God with our full selves. Uh, Throughout the season of Lent, we're going to be praying these words, uh, You will see that they are listed in your reflection guide, so you'll see them at the top of, I think, the first page or second page once you open it with the information for today. And I'd encourage you to keep this Lent guide um, close to you. You can keep it in in your bedside table, you can keep it in your car, somewhere where you will see it daily. I'd also encourage you to write down the words of the Shema at some point during Lent. We're going to be coming back to them week after week, so they will be words that become familiar to you, but I encourage you to put them somewhere where you will see them quite regularly to be able to reflect on the meaning behind them for you as we go throughout this season of Lent. As we wrap up this morning, I'd like to offer you a question that I have been asking myself as I've been reflecting on this Hear, O Israel. The question is actually listed in your Lenten devotional, so you can open it up if it is helpful for you to already process and answer this question. You've got pens right in front of you where you can do that. Um, But the question I've been asking is, what have you been hearing from God lately? What has God been inviting or challenging you to pay attention to or to focus on? I encourage you to be thinking about what that looks like or means for you this week. During the season of Lent, we'll take time to listen to God more closely, to pay attention in a different sort of way to what God is inviting or challenging us to pay attention to. So this does feel like a very fitting way for us to start this season. I know for me, I've sensed a call from God in the season to pay attention to paying attention more. I can too easily find myself kind of numbing out at the end of the day as I scroll on my phone or zoning out just trying to turn my brain off so that I don't have to think anymore um, rather than paying attention to what God is doing around me. Just spending time listening, reflecting, yes, even paying attention. I've also found God inviting me to trust God with both the little things and the big things in my life, recognizing that too often I have a desire to control what is not mine to control. So part of my own personal work in this Lent uh, season is to offer God my whole self, all of who I am, to offer my worries, my plans, my joys, all to our God that we know is abundantly faithful. So as we consider in this season of Lent, 
what it looks like for us to offer our whole selves to God. I'm actually going to turn it over to Ryan Ede, who's going to share a little bit about his own spiritual journey and what he has been processing in his own faith over the last couple years. Good morning, Favumsi. My name is Ryan Ede, and today I want to share with you a little about my journey of spiritual growth over the last few years and how it has impacted my life. Our family started attending Favumsi in 2019, and we began getting plugged in through Bible studies and small groups. I started to look for ways to serve and got connected with the praise team where I could leverage some of my spiritual gifts as a musician. The more involved we started to become, the more we felt like Favumsi was our new church home, and we decided to join as members in March of 2020 right before the pandemic shut down. The Sunday that we were supposed to take our membership vows was actually the first Sunday that the church canceled in-person worship due to the pandemic. This was a time of uncertainty and anxiety for everyone. As the world shifted to virtual spaces for school and work, I felt more disconnected than ever. Thankfully, I received the opportunity to join the new stream team, leveraging some of my technology skills to help support our church's streaming services. I also applied my recent experience on the tech team to new ministries by serving with our youth tech team, helping them to learn the ropes of the sound booth and planting the early seeds of serving at church. These roles resonated with my belief that I was meant to serve in the background, supporting our church without stepping into any sort of visible leadership role. I've always felt hesitant about leadership at church, doubting myself and fearing the responsibility of guiding others without formal theological training. The thought of misinterpreting scripture or saying the wrong thing is scary to me. Through several of the sermon series, I started to work on my spiritual self and figure out where God was working in my life. During the All Things New series, we were called to leave behind our fear. The power to serve is built on our confidence in God. I knew that calling made sense, but it didn't make it any less difficult. I would need constant encouragement to grow. Another series that spoke to me was Life in Boxes. Owen and Hope used physical boxes to show how we tend to compartmentalize various portions of our life, keeping them separate. Our work, family, personal, and church lives are often purposely disconnected. I realized that I actively kept many aspects of my life separate, but worse yet, I was trying to hide some portions of my life from God. I didn't feel like I needed to bring God into my work environment, which contributed to the feeling that things were fractured. I knew that these teachings were calling me to become a better version of myself, I needed to find a way to see God working throughout all the different compartments of my life. Unfortunately, with the constant busyness of work and family commitments, I found it difficult to see God's work in my life at all. I was too busy focusing on all the things that I needed to get done each week. This led me to start to carve out times of quiet during commutes, camping trips, and hiking trips. In these moments of solitude, prayer became a conduit through which I could see God's work in the world around me. I've been blessed with many spiritual gifts, yet struggled how to apply them best to serve God. Our family has always prioritized financial giving, viewing it as returning to God what is already His. I realize that this principle also applies to spiritual gifts bestowed upon us. They are given to us to serve God in His kingdom. The idea propelled me to get involved more deeply with our church, stepping out of my comfort zone to serve in capacities that once seemed difficult, such as co-leading a Bible study for our scouting youth. It became clear to me that serving God isn't just about volunteering time. It's about dedicating our whole selves, our talents, and our hearts to Him. This led me to look for ways that I could push beyond my comfort level and serve in other capacities that I didn't feel confident in. I was called to serve on our staff parish relations committee. This was a big step for me personally because it put me in a role that definitely started to feel very visible, and that was the type of role I would normally navigate away from. Fortunately, I was able to use some of my work experiences to work on a subcommittee of SPRC and focus on some of the benefits around the staff. It made me feel like I could leverage some of the gifts that God gave me to help improve a part of our church. I know I need to continue to motivate motivate myself to take the challenge and grow. One of my driving motivations has been to set an example for my sons. It's so important for them to see their dad living out a commitment of giving, serving, and loving God with all that I am. It's easy to tell your kids what you care about and what you want them to focus their attention on, but it's much more powerful to stand up and lead by example. This journey has led me to reflect deeply on what it means to be a disciple of Christ, integrating the teachings and sermons into my daily life. In sharing my story, I hope to encourage others to recognize and use their gifts in service to God. It's about moving from a place of doubt and hesitation to one of active faith and service. 
It's about seeing every aspect of our lives as an opportunity to serve and glorify God. Thank you for allowing me to share a little about my journey with you. I'm still working towards becoming a better disciple of Jesus, and each day is one step towards that goal. Well, I'm so grateful to Ryan for sharing his story this morning. As we continue to reflect on what it looks like for us to offer our whole selves to God, let us pray. Holy God, you're a God who hears us. You're a God who is not simply here, but is also a God who hears, who listens, who desires to pay attention to us, your created ones, the ones that you call beloved. So God, this morning, you begin the work of offering our whole selves to you. And I know for, for some of us, that is scary work, work that feels unfamiliar or maybe even unsure where to start. So God, we ask that you would meet us in that place. God, for others of us, and this is work that we have done for many years, um, day in and day out, and yet we ask that you also would meet us anew, that in this season, you would remind us that we don't have to siphon up off just a part of our lives to offer it to you on Sunday mornings when we come to worship, but you are a God who sees us and knows us and desires for us to be able to offer our lives and our talents um, to you so that not just our lives can be transformed to look more like Jesus, but that the community around us, the world around us, might also come to look more like you. So God, we boldly ask that you would do this work in each of us, that you would remind us that you are a God who does not just see us, but you hear us and you listen whenever we cry out to you. God, we boldly pray these, na- these words in the name of your son, Jesus, who teaches us to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I invite you to stand as you're able and sing with us. Till every earth 
great to be able to be in worship with you uh, together this morning. And, uh, you know, sometimes when I get to the end of my day, come home, catching up uh, with people in the house, ask the question, how was your day? How was your day? Or sometimes you get to the end of my week, think back on the week that's come before and uh, like just kind of glad that it's over and done with. I, I really believe that these next few weeks for each of us individually and collectively can be a chance to kind of like zoom back out for a second and just not just look back over the last day or the week that you survived, but to see the work that God has been doing in your life over the last while, right? However you want to define that, but over the last few years, I think I don't want to talk about you like you're not in the room, right? But um, Ryan, who you just met and is here in the flesh, uh, was up on the screen. And I, you know, Hope and I asked him to share some of his story because we've heard him processing over the course of the last few months. Uh, and then I think having to do that work, you said, it was like, oh, look at this. God has been working for a while. This is amazing. Um, I think that's just a gift, like having the opportunity to do that. So uh, whether you're gonna be worshiping with us week in and week out or not, I hope that you will use these next few weeks uh, to take that opportunity. Uh, you can obviously pick one of these up to help you do just that. And the, the link on the back, um, if, if you have recognized something that God is doing in your life, I really think these things can be a benefit to each other as we listen uh, to each other share our stories. And so I would include, uh, encourage you to go share and go listen uh, there on that Facebook page so that we can, uh, we can share in the good news of the work that God is doing in each of our lives. Uh, and now, uh, may the Spirit of God that has been at work within you uh, continue to work in and through you as you head out into the places you live, work, and play to be the people of God in the places that God has sent you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. We'll see you guys next weekend. Jesus in that tomb, you see. His purpose was always to exalt Jesus, to exalt that name above every other name, so that the name of Jesus Christ, every knee will bow and every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord. Jesus Christ is the King of Kings. Amen and glory to God.
good morning, friends. Let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Well, again, welcome to worship. If we haven't had a chance to meet yet, uh, my name is Owen. I'm one of the pastors here, and it's good to be together with all of you this morning. Uh, If this is your first time or your first time in a long time, we'd love to extend to you a particular word of welcome, uh, as well as to offer you some homemade cookies. Uh, So we have someone tightly bundled up outside just on the other side of the fountain, uh, and they've got goodie bags with some homemade cookies as well as some information about our church. And we'd love a chance before you head out today, uh, not just to connect with you there, but if and when you're ready to get you connected with others. A couple of other things for the good of the cause. Uh, we're all going to have, uh, and we have had people joining and being baptized all morning, so we've got some of that coming up today. Um, if that's something that you've been looking forward to, if you have questions about it, what it looks like to be a part of our covenant community here, uh, we've got a new members class coming up next Sunday afternoon, uh, as well as the schedule for the rest of the year uh, is right there on the website, and so you can feel free to go there and check that out when you have a moment. Uh, and then also, uh, today is the first Sunday in a season we call Lent, which is the season that leads to Easter. It's a journey of about 40 days, and it actually started on Wednesday at our Ash Wednesday service. If you weren't able to be here with us for that, uh, you can go back and worship with us online later this week. Um, But uh, we kind of are taking this journey together for the next few Sundays, and we'll spend some time in a little bit talking about Uh, what that'll look like. But uh, hopefully when you came in uh, this morning, uh, you were handed one of our Lenten journey guides. Um, We're going to be talking about what it looks like to worship with our whole selves, all that we have and all that we are. Um, And so each uh, page in here is a week um, and is designed to journey with you as we journey uh, together. So hopefully you'll have a chance to, uh, uh, to snag one of those. If you didn't get it on your way in, you can get one on your way out in a little bit. Uh, And now, as you are able, I would invite you to stand as we sing our way into worship.
Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is one true church, apostolic and universal, whose holy faith let us now declare. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. If you're standing, please be seated. Thank you, choir, for leading us so well. Uh, well, friends, this morning we have the gift of all morning long we've been inviting people into our church by both membership and baptism. And 
so that you have a chance to get to meet everybody who has been joining or being baptized all morning long. We have a short video of getting all of them to introduce themselves to you. Hi, I'm Cliff. This is Scotty. And I'm Sarah. And this is PJ. We started attending in 2020 virtually, and then in 2021 we started attending in person, and that's when Scotty was baptized here, and we became members. And this morning, PJ is going to be baptized. Hi, my name is Lee Kisselberg. I've been coming to FBUMC for a little over a year now, and I play guitar in contemporary worship and help lead the youth. Um, I'm excited to join today. Hey, my name is Jessica Trimbley, and um, we have been a member of the church for about 12 years now. Hi, my name is Brooke, and I'm getting baptized today. Good morning. My name is Linda Ramji. I've been attending Fugue River Arena United Methodist Church for a little over a year since I first moved to this area, and I'm excited to make this my church home. Um, well, anytime we have someone come to join our church community, we ask the same question, so I will ask them on behalf of the church to you today. Do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? Do you? I do. Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? Do you? I do. And do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in his grace, and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church, which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races? Do you? And then finally, according to the grace given to you, will you serve as Christ's representative in the world? And as members of Christ's universal church, will you be loyal to Christ through the United Methodist Church as you faithfully participate in the ministries of this congregation by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness? Will you? I will. Well, brothers and sisters in Christ, I commend to your love and care, uh, Linda, who stands now before you, um, will you welcome, uh, who we're welcoming into membership today, do all in your power to increase her faith, to confirm her hope, and to perfect her in love. Let's welcome her with these words. We, we rejoice, rejoice and bid you welcome to, to Fuquay Arena United, United Methodist, Methodist Church. Church. With, with you, we renew our vows to uphold it by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness. And we have a goodie bag filled with all sorts of things for you as well. So we are so excited to get to welcome you officially. Let's welcome Linda well. <laughs> Thank you, Linda. Good morning. My name is Stacy Simpson. Please join with me in the prayer for illumination. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as I should have read and your word proclaim, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. Our scripture this morning comes from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 6, verses 4 through 9. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. Keep these words that I am commanding you today in your heart. Recite them to your children and talk about them with, when you are home and when you are away and when you lie down and when you rise. Bind them as a sign on your hand Fix them as an emblem on your forehead and write them on the doorpost of your house and on your gates. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, friends, as Owen mentioned earlier, we are in our first Sunday of Lent, which is the 40-day season, not including Sundays, leading up to Easter. Lent traditionally is a season of fasting and preparation, and during this season, we prepare ourselves to be able to fully celebrate Easter. We began this journey on Ash Wednesday. I know many of you were with us just a couple days ago for that. And today we're beginning a brand new sermon series called With My Whole Self. And during the series, we'll be talking about what it looks like to love God with our whole self. 
Um, before we jump in, though, I think it is helpful to share a little bit about how we got here, because I think this series, not only today, but as we go along, will make a little bit more sense with a bit of backstory. Uh, several times a year, as a worship team on our staff, we get together to map out sermon series for not only the coming months, sometimes even up to about a year from then. And when we do this kind of work, there are a couple things that we are doing. We're spending some time looking back and reflecting on where we have been, and we also spend time prayerfully asking on what our congregation needs to hear right now or what God is doing in our midst that we need to listen to or press in a little bit more. So about eight months ago in May of last year, when we gathered to do this work of mapping out the sermon series, we ended up putting on the wall all of the sermon series from the last two-ish years that we could remember. So just whatever we could think of off the top of our brain. And when we wrote out these series, uh, we noticed that there was a consistent theme of a journey that we had been on. It's not one that we could have necessarily named uh, from the beginning of that conversation, but as we went along, we noticed, wow, we kind of said the same things in a lot of different ways, kind of this regular theme for an invitation to return to God with our whole selves. All that we are, all that we have, the good, the bad, the ugly. Uh, we also recognize that there are hurdles and barriers to that work. We often live fragmented lives where we segment kind of church into one box that we take off the shelf once a week or whatnot. Um, we often have hard hearts or shame or guilt or even culturally formed notions of God all kind of help us or, or keep us from being able to love God with our whole selves. So during this series of series, we have been naming how we can love God, worship God, be consumed by God, and even known by God, all with our whole selves. And we've used a lot of different language throughout these series of series, but again, we didn't really realize exactly where we had been until we kind of got together and mapped them all out on the wall. Now, you might be wondering, all right, Hope, what does that have to do with where we ended up with today, and like, well, how does all of this matter? Well, I will tell you that when I opened our sermon series document to prepare for this morning, I took a quick peek back at when this document was first created, and that was on March 20th of last year. So this series has been one that has been in the works for quite some time. We've been hopeful that we can have some kind of series that invites us to think about what it looks like to live an embodied faith in all that we do. And as Owen and Shelby and I were mapping out this series, uh, we moved it around from several different places over the last year and finally landed in Lent of 24, so here we are. But as we were mapping it out, we felt like, gosh, are we just going to sound like a broken record? Like we've said these things over and over again, and when we first thought about it, we didn't realize yet, like, oh, these are themes we already have been talking about quite a bit. And so for a hot second, we were like, do we just need to scrap it and move on and find a different series, even though it was one we were so hopeful to be able to preach through. Um, but then we found ourselves kind of inviting or being invited by God to ask a different sort of question to ask who in our community is already living into these questions of what a life embodying the love of Jesus with our whole self might look like. So we've decided over the course of Lent to turn over the mic to folks in our congregation to hear a little bit about from y'all about how your journey of faith has go gone over the last couple years, to hear like what are the things that you are processing or the things that God has been up to in the midst of your life. So today I'm going to set up the series, and Owen is going to close us out in the end, but in between you will have the treat of getting to hear from several lay preachers in our congregation. So folks that sit in here week in and week out just like you that have agreed to kind of preach and share what they have been processing in their own life. And this morning, as well as every week throughout Lent, we also have folks that are kind of storytellers that are going to share a bit about their own processing stories of what God has been up to in their own life as well. So you really are in for a treat. I'm so excited for the series and have gotten some sneak peeks of where we are headed. And it really, you certainly are in for a treat. But I realize that this is a very long introduction to a sermon series today, but I do feel like this setup is helpful to hear kind of where we are headed with the rest of Lent. So as we talk about what it looks like to love God with our whole selves, the framing scripture that you heard Stacy just read that we're going to be coming back to each week is called the Shema. So the Shema is a prayer from the Old Testament that Jewish people have prayed for thousands of years, both every morning and every evening. Even if you haven't heard the word Shema before, I imagine that the words of the Shema, kind of these verses, are really familiar to you. 
Again, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. This is a verse we are going to be coming back to each week of Lent. You might already be familiar with these words. You might know that Jesus called these the greatest commandment, along with the second greatest commandment, that you should love your neighbor as yourself. But the Shema embodies the heart of God's desire for us, to love God with the fullness of who we are, and then by extension, to love our neighbors as ourselves. And scripture even says that on these two commandments hang all of the law and all of the prophets, meaning taken together, the Hebrew scripture and the Old Testament can all be boiled down into these two commandments, to love God and to love neighbor. Everything that we do or say or think can be motivated by this core impulse to both love God and love our neighbors. So knowing the importance of this scripture, it is not surprising then to hear how Deuteronomy highlights the importance of remembering this commandment, as it invites us to do whatever we can to not forget this commandment to love God with our whole selves. I mean, you heard Stacy read some of these words a moment ago, but it invites, the scripture invites us not just to put these commandments on our heart, but to tell them to our kids when we're sitting at home, when we are out and about walking, when we lie down, when we get up, that we should remember these commandments in all that we do. It even goes on to say, tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. And these instructions might seem a little bit extreme, but I think it also certainly highlights the importance of remembering to love God with our whole selves in all that we do, not just for one moment in one day, but in all that we do. In fact, um, folks have lived into this scripture for so much time. I mean, even dating back to the third century AD, Jews have been fixing these scriptures on the doorposts of their home inside what's called a mezuzot. We've got a photo of that. And this is a, a case that is put on the door frame of your house so that when you are coming in or going out, um, you can put your hand on here knowing that the scriptures inside are the Shema, these words that remind you to love God with your whole self. Another way that folks have lived into this scripture is through um, tefillin, which is a small leather box that is filled, again, with these scriptures, as well as you'll see the long leather ropes that allow you to tie the, and bind the scriptures both around your arms as well as your forehead, reminding you to be tied to God, to love God with the whole of yourself. So the hope is that by praying the Shema daily, we learn to offer all that we have and all that we are to our God. And we recognize that in return, God promises to offer us a transformed life. Over the next few weeks, we'll be exploring what it looks like to love God with our whole selves. This is not just a question that we are asking up here, but it is a question that we are inviting you to reflect on personally. What does that look like for you in this season? Now, one of the things that has been helpful to me as I have been thinking through this series is that as we think about loving God with our whole selves, sometimes it can be hard to just imagine what does it mean to love God with our whole selves. But the scripture even breaks our whole up into three parts, um, with our, our heart, our soul, and our strength. Again, these are all three distinct parts of what makes somebody uh, themselves. And yet, I think each of those three can help us remember what it looks like to offer not just one of those things or two of those things, but the whole of who we are to our God. So our lay preachers are going to be diving a little bit more into those three distinct parts. But I wanted to end today by looking at the very first words in the Shema. And the first word is hear. It says, hear, O Israel. Now, I can tell you that this is a scripture that I have known since I was a child. It's one that I have recited for probably as long as I can remember. And yet, whenever I think about the scripture, I have more traditionally thought of this first word as hear, like H-E-R-E. -E. And yet, it is spelled H-E-A-R, to hear as in to listen. When we think about hear, O Israel, as the setup for this verse, it changes so much of how we see the introduction. In fact, uh, the Hebrew word for hear is Shema, which is where it gets the name, this prayer called the Shema. This word means to hear as in to listen, but it also means to pay attention to or to focus on. Shema can mean to respond to what you hear. It can be a call for help. And we often hear in the Psalms a cry to Shema my voice or to hear my voice when I call, O Lord, be merciful and to answer me. 
Therefore, it's not just a call for God to help, but it is a call for God to hear us and to do something about what God is hearing. It also is fascinating to me that in the Hebrew, there are not separate words for listen and obey, but the call to listen is a call to also obey. So in the Shema, when we say, hear, O Israel, H-E-A-R, it is not an invitation just to hear the words of the rest of the Shema, to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, but it also is an invitation to obey, to put these words into action, to embody the wholeness of our lives with these words. Throughout the season of Lent, we are going to be praying these words together. Uh, They are listed in your Lent devotional that you got when you came into worship. You'll see them under today's devotion, so you are welcome to put that in a place that you're going to see it for the rest of the week. Again, we're going to be coming back to these verse, this verse week after week. But I also would encourage you to find a way to either write out these words somewhere that you will see them regularly, whether you put them at your bedside table or in your car or by your phone or somewhere that you will see them to remember these words as we pray them together throughout this season of Lent. And as we close this morning, I'd like to offer the question to you that I have been kind of wrestling with and sitting with this week, which is, what have you been hearing from God lately? What has God been inviting or challenging you to pay attention to or to focus on? And as I said throughout the series, this is one that we are hopeful to hear from you. And so I'd invite you to answer this question in your Linton devotional. So you'll see that the second page has some room for reflection on just this very question. So even this morning, if you want to grab a pen that's in the chair in front of you and be thinking or reflecting on kind of what your answer is, as I kind of tell you what I have been processing, you're more than welcome to do just that. But for me, during the season of Lent, um, as I have been kind of wrestling and sitting with this question thus far, um, our hope is that we will take time to more closely pay attention in a different sort of way to whatever it is that God is inviting or challenging us to pay attention to or focus on. So for me, I have sensed a call from God in this season to pay attention to paying attention more. Um, I too easily can find myself numbing out as I scroll on my phone or zone out at the end of the day, and it is just too much all at once, and I want to have a moment to turn my brain off at the end of the day instead of taking time to listen to what God is doing around me, to take time to listen and reflect and even pay attention. I've also found God inviting me to trust God with both the little things and the big things in my own life, recognizing that too often I have a desire to control what is not mine to control. As a part of my own personal work in this Lent is to offer to God the whole of who I am, to offer my worries, my plans, my joys, all to our God who is abundantly faithful. So as we consider in this Lent kind of what your own answers or reflections are to this question and also what it looks like for us to worship God and to love God with our whole selves, I'm going to turn it over to our first storyteller, who is Ryan Ede, and he's going to share a little bit more about his own spiritual journey that he's been on over the last couple years, as well as kind of what it has looked like for him to process what it looks like to love God with his whole self. Good morning, Favumsi. My name is Ryan Ede, and today I want to share with you a little about my journey of spiritual growth over the last few years and how it has impacted my life. Our family started attending Favumsi in 2019, and we began getting plugged in through Bible studies and small groups. I started to look for ways to serve and get connected with the praise team where I could leverage some of my spiritual gifts as a musician. The more involved we started to become, the more we felt like Favumsi was our new church home, and we decided to join as members in March of 2020 right before the pandemic shutdown. The Sunday that we were supposed to take our membership vows was actually the first Sunday that the church canceled in-person worship due to the pandemic. This was a time of uncertainty and anxiety for everyone. As the world shifted to virtual spaces for school and work, I felt more disconnected than ever. Thankfully, I received the opportunity to join the new stream team, leveraging some of my technology skills to help support our church's streaming services. I also applied my recent experience on the tech team to new ministries by serving with our youth tech team, helping them to learn the ropes of the sound booth and planting the early seeds of serving at church. These roles resonated with my belief that I was meant to serve in the background, supporting our church without stepping into any sort of visible leadership role. I've always felt hesitant about leadership at church, doubting myself and fearing the responsibility of guiding others without formal theological training. The thought of misinterpreting scripture or saying the wrong thing is scary to me. 
Through several of the sermon series, I started to work on my spiritual self and figure out where God was working in my life. During the All Things New series, we were called to leave behind our fear. The power to serve is built on our confidence in God. I knew that calling made sense, but it didn't make it any less difficult. I would need constant encouragement to grow. Another series that spoke to me was Life in Boxes. Owen and Hope used physical boxes to show how we tend to compartmentalize various portions of our life, keeping them separate. Our work, family, personal, and church lives are often purposely disconnected. I realized that I actively kept many aspects of my life separate, but worse yet, I was trying to hide some portions of my life from God. I didn't feel like I needed to bring God into my work environment, which contributed to the feeling that things were fractured. I knew that these teachings were calling me to become a better version of myself. I needed to find a way to see God working throughout all the different compartments of my life. Unfortunately, with the constant busyness of work and family commitments, I found it difficult to see God's work in my life at all. I was too busy focusing on all the things that I needed to get done each week. This led me to start to carve out times of quiet during commutes, camping trips, and hiking trips. In these moments of solitude, prayer became a conduit through which I could see God's work in the world around me. I've been blessed with many spiritual gifts, yet struggled how to apply them best to serve God. Our family has always prioritized financial giving, viewing it as returning to God what is already His. I realize that this principle also applies to spiritual gifts bestowed upon us. They are given to us to serve God in His kingdom. The idea propelled me to get involved more deeply with our church, stepping out of my comfort zone to serve in capacities that once seemed difficult, such as co-leading a Bible study for our scouting youth. It became clear to me that serving God isn't just about volunteering time. It's about dedicating our whole selves, our talents, and our hearts to Him. This led me to look for ways that I could push beyond my comfort level and serve in other capacities that I didn't feel confident in. I was called to serve on our staff parish relations committee. This was a big step for me personally because it put me in a role that definitely started to feel very visible, and that was the type of role I would normally navigate away from. Fortunately, I was able to use some of my work experiences to work on a subcommittee of SPRC and focus on some of the benefits around the staff. It made me feel like I could leverage some of the gifts that God gave me to help improve a part of our church. I know I need to continue to motivate motivate myself to take the challenge and grow. One of my driving motivations has been to set an example for my sons. It's so important for them to see their dad living out a commitment of giving, serving, and loving God with all that I am. It's easy to tell your kids what you care about and what you want them to focus their attention on, but it's much more powerful to stand up and lead by example. This journey has led me to reflect deeply on what it means to be a disciple of Christ, integrating the teachings and sermons into my daily life. In sharing my story, I hope to encourage others to recognize and use their gifts and service to God. It's about moving from a place of doubt and hesitation to one of active faith and service. It's about seeing every aspect of our lives as an opportunity to serve and glorify God. Thank you for allowing me to share a little about my journey with you. I'm still working towards becoming a better disciple of Jesus, and each day is one step towards that goal. Well, we're grateful to Ryan and to all who will uh, take a chance over the next few uh, weeks to share their stories with you. That can be a very daunting thing to do. Um, One of the things that was really exciting about uh, Ryan is I think when we were sort of inviting him or considering inviting him to do that, uh, I think we've been able to watch some growth in himself that I'm not sure he was able to see in himself until he paused long enough to kind of zoom out and reflect on what God has been doing in his life uh, over the last little bit. And I really, I really hope, and I think we are prayerful, that uh, this season of Lent can be for all of us an opportunity to do that exact same thing, Um, and that sharing these stories with one another uh, can encourage us to to slow down, to pause, uh, to pay attention, to paying attention, uh, to use your your phrase there. So uh, we'll zoom out uh, over the series, not just in our own lives, but I think it's always good when we can zoom out and see the work of God throughout time and space, throughout our history, Uh, and that's part of the work that we do when we gather around this table together. And so I invite you to join me as we pray with one another, uh, as we prepare our hearts and minds to, to feast on the good gift of God's grace to us. We will begin that work with a prayer of confession. Let's pray together. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. 
We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. And we have not loved our neighbors or heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray, and free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Well, brothers and sisters in Christ, hear this good news, and that is while we were still in open rebellion against God, Christ died for us, and that is proof of God's love for us, so that I can say to you, in the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. I invite us to continue in prayer as we join together in the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right, and it's a good and a joyful thing always and everywhere to give our thanks and praise to you, Almighty Father, creator of heaven and earth. You shaped us and formed us in your image. You breathed into us the very breath of life. When our love failed and we turned away, it's your love that has remained steadfast, that has continued to seek us out and to call us back to your very own heart. And so it is with all the people on earth in the great company of heaven that we praise your name and join together in their unending hymn saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you indeed, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. It was by the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection that you gave birth to us, your church, that you delivered us when we were slaves to sin and death, and instead have made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit, a covenant that Jesus initiated and inaugurated on the night he gave himself up for us when he departed from what would have been familiar words, breaking the bread and saying to his disciples, his friends, take and eat, this is my body broken for you. Every time you eat bread like this, remember me. And then when the supper was over, he took the cup, which was called the cup of remembrance. Again, he blessed you for it and then offered it to his friends and said, take and drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Every time you drink it like this, remember me. And so it is in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Christ Jesus, our Lord, that we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice to you in union with Christ's offering for us, as together we proclaim the mystery of our faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. And now, O God, pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ so that we can be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with you, make us one with each other, and make us one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes again in final victory and we feast at last together at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with your Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forevermore. Amen. Well, friends, uh, trusting that we can call ourselves children of God because of this gift of grace, we are bold to pray together the prayer that Jesus teaches us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Right now, we're preparing for communion in the centrum, but we wanted to take a second here behind the scenes to say hello. My name is Amy Balfour, and I'm the Minister of Visitation and Spiritual Care. Welcome to our stream room. As we enter into this time of communion on the stream, we would encourage you to use this time for reflection. While we aren't able to gather for communion online in the same way that we are in person, in our Methodist tradition, when we have been unable to celebrate communion together, we have traditionally practiced what's called a love feast. Love feasts aren't a sacrament, 
nor intended to replace communion, but they do invite us to prayer, reflection, and thanksgiving with one another, whether in person or online. So we encourage you to grab a cup of coffee or a snack and join in this ancient tradition of love feasting. As you eat or drink, we invite you to reflect on what praises and thanksgivings you have to offer God this morning. You're, you're welcome to reflect silently, or if you're worshiping with someone, feel free to share your thanksgivings together. You can also put your thanksgivings in the comments section on Facebook or text them to us. We would love to give thanks with you. Lastly, some of you have come by the church office earlier in the week to pick up communion elements. If you have, we invite you to receive communion with us now as we worship from different places. If you would like to come receive communion during the week, please call us or text communion and we'd love to find a way to provide communion to you. In just a second, we will rejoin the rest of the congregation and as they receive communion, we invite you to continue in this posture of reflection and thanksgiving as we anticipate the day when we will all feast together at God's heavenly banquet.
we didn't decide are you talking first <laughs> i just said you want to do the benediction together and she said yeah that'd be great but we didn't no plan who was going to go first apparently <laughs> Uh, friends, it's been a great gift uh, to be together with all of you this morning. Uh, again, as we embark upon our Lenten journey together, um, whether that's something that you anticipate doing with us week in and week out, or if there are other places where you worship, uh, we hope that you're doing it there as well. Uh, but we'd love for you to take uh, one of these guides with you as you head out, um, and that we could commit ourselves uh, to the work of offering our whole self our heart, our mind, our strength, those things that we are proud of, those things that we are not proud of, offering all of it uh, to God. Very good. Well, friends, as we head out from here, may you go in the strength and love of our God to love God with your whole self. May you do that in all of the places where you live, work, and play. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, friends, and we will see you next week.